Hello students, I hope everybody is fine in this time of lockdown due to coronavirus. However, don't have to panic, everything is going to be fine. Yep. So today we'll discuss class 10 chapter 1, resources and development. First, we'll try and understand what is resource. Okay. Everything available in our environment, which can be used to satisfy our needs provided it is technologically accessible, economically feasible and culturally acceptable can be termed as resource. Okay, so every time you define resource, just keep in mind these three key points. Next, we'll see the types of resources we have. On the basis of origin, we have biotic and abiotic. Biotic means living, abiotic non-living. Then on the basis of exhaustibility, we have renewable and non-renewable. On the basis of ownership, individual resources. Resources that are owned privately by the individual such as your house, your property. Community resources. Resources that are owned by the community such as community halls, uh, parks, playgrounds, national resources. Resources within the n national political boundary that is and also at sea that is within the 12 nautical miles international resources resources beyond 200 nautical miles at the sea that is the international resource and next we'll see the status on uh, on the basis of status of development potential resource okay the resource which are found in a region but have not been utilized for instance, Rajasthan and Gujarat have enormous potential for solar and wind energy. But so far, these have not been developed properly. Such resources are potential resources. Now we have developed resources. Resources that has been surveyed and the quality and quantity have been determined for utilization. Such resources are developed resources. And what is stock resources? Resources that have been surveyed but cannot be used due to lack of technology okay for instance we have uh, water water is a compound of two inflammable gases hydrogen and oxygen which can be a rich source of energy but we do not have technical know-how to use them yeah and same as the nitrogen okay so such resources are stock resources Reserve resources, resources which can be put into use with the existing technology, but we haven't used them sufficiently, such as the river water can be used for generating hydroelectricity power, but presently it is being utilized only to some limited extent, right? So such resources are reserved, including the forest. Next, we'll see major problems due to indiscriminate use of resources. What is indiscriminate use of resources? It's action done without thoughts of what the result may be or random use of resources. Okay, some major problems we'll see. First, depletion of resources. Definitely, our resource will be depleted if you do not use wisely. Secondly, accumulation of resources in few hands. That will divide our society into two segments have and have nots rich and poor thirdly it will lead to global ecological crisis such as global warming ozone layer depletion environmental pollution and land degradation so just know this few major problems due to indiscriminate use of resources next we'll see what is sustainable development Development taking place without damaging the environment and the development in the present should not compromise with the needs of the future. Yeah, Any development that is done today, it should not affect the future. That is what is sustainable development. Rio de Janeiro Earth Summit 1992. Okay. In June 1992, more than 100 heads of states, states meaning here, country met in Rio de Janeiro that's in Brazil for a first international earth summit why well, it's important because it's the first international earth summit ever held 
the assembled leaders signed a declaration on global climatic change and biodiversity and adopted agenda 21 for we'll see what is agenda 21 in the next slide achieving sustainable development in the 21st century so agenda 21 what is it it is a declaration signed by the world leaders in the year 1992 at the united Nations conference on environment and development which took place at Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It aims at achieving a global sustainable development. Now let's see resource planning in India. Why is resource planning in India very important? There are some reasons which can be considered as self-sufficient in terms of the availability of the resources and there are some regions which have shortage of some essential resources. For instance, if you see the states, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Ch uh, Odisha, Jharkhand, especially the Chhattanagpur region, very rich in minerals. Yep. And also if you see the states, Arunachal, if you see the state Arunachal Pradesh, abundance of water, but they lack infrastructure there. They do not have proper technology. And same, and if you see Rajasthan, they, as we already spoke, it has high potential of what solar and wind energy, but what, but they do not, they lack water resources. So there is enormous diversity in the availability of the resources in India. So which is a call for the balanced resource planning. So we need a balanced resource planning, and this planning is to be done at the national level state level regional level and local level okay so that is why we need resource planning and also for the judicious use of resource now how is resource planning to be executed how do we execute it yes we know there's a need but how do we execute it first we got to identify the resources okay. we need to survey it we need to do the mapping in which states what resources and then we need to estimate secondly we need to have a planning structure okay, and use the appropriate technology okay now suppose in Arunachal Pradesh there is abundance of water what technology do we use here maybe what project could be done maybe dams could be built for hydroelectricity power generation yes like in Rajasthan potent high potential of solar and wind energy yes so yes so that is the second point and third point matching the resource development plans with overall national development uh, with all overall national development plans so everything is uh, so our development also should meet with the national goals national achievements for instance like in the first five year plans that is 1951-56 India was going through famine so India's aim of national planning resource planning was focused on agriculture first five year plan the next five year plans 1956-51 India's aim was at industry so that is why a uh, resource planning is very essential and that is how it has to be done yeah and and there's a quote here there is enough for everybody's need and not for everybody's greed that was said by Mahatma Gandhi now there could be a question where you'd be given this statement uh, this quote and then asked who said this and why and the answer to it is Gandhi is basically trying to say greedy and selfish individuals and exploitative nature of modern technology are the root cause for the resource depletion and global at the global level he was against the mass production and wanted to replace it with the production by the mass that is what he was trying to say with this quote statement that he made well let's see next yes next slide yes land utilization well we all know land is the utmost important where do we go without land right we live on land 
we perform all our economic activities on land and land can be utilized for different purposes right so now we'll see the major purposes for which the land are being utilized okay first is permanent pastures what is it land used for growing grasses okay then grazing lands basically land uh, to graze the cattle forest then fallow land what is fallow land land normally used for farming but is left with no crops for a season or so why in order to recover its fertility could regain its fertil uh, fertility that is fallow land now the wasteland what is wasteland land which is left fallow from long uh, for a long period of time okay so wasteland is basically part of fallow land if you keep it for a long period of time then it it will be called as the wasteland now that wasteland is still a uh, cultivable land next we have barren land what is it land that cannot be used for cultivation example like a hilly terrain okay barren land you cannot cultivate land put to non agricultural uses such as buildings roads factories okay so these are the major land utilizations so just know the terms fallow lands wasteland barren land just know what are they okay because this might be some new terms let's see next net zone area and gross cropped area all right so here we have two pictures land a and land b it is just an example for you that i have made so land a has five hectares land b has five hectares and you grow one crop per year that is the agriculture year and then land b also three crops per agriculture year but when we calculate net zone area we are not uh, we are only seeing uh, how much land has been calculated so we have five hectares five hectares so total 10 hectares so net zone area is just 10 hectares but when we take in consideration of growth uh, when we talk about gross cropped area we take into consideration of the number of crops also grown in that agricultural year okay now uh, land a five hectares land b three crops here as one crop so it's just five and here three crops so five into three fifteen so fifteen plus five fifteen plus five twenty so gross cropped area would be twenty 20 hectares okay so that's the difference if you have any queries you can comment below I'll let, i can explain again this. we will see the next slide land degradation and conservation measures well land degradation how is land getting degraded due to deforestation over irrigation mining over grazing mineral processing industries for some students those who didn't understand mineral processing industries it's the industries such as cement industries or ceramic industries that produce a lots of dust in the atmosphere and when this dust uh, settles down on the earth surface on the ground that retards the penetration of water to the soil eventually degrading the land so that's how the mineral processing industry degrade the land land conservation how afforestation management of grazing lands afforestation planting trees yeah Man, uh, proper regulation of mining no illegal mining and whatever the pits have been done has to be refilled yeah so drips and sprinkler uh, irrigation of course this is the expensive method but this is the this is the most effective and conservative method or of uh, conserving the land yeah proper discharge of industrial waste i also missed out here so the shelter belts okay please add shelter belts here we'll see the next slide okay so next we'll move into the classification of soils we'll be discussing all types of soils here uh major soils they are found in india in indian context first we'll see the alluvial soil formation Himalayas and deltas plays a very very important role in the formation of the alluvial soil. The entire northern plains are made up of alluvial soil and most of the deposition are done by Indus, Ganga, Brahmaputra rivers. I'm pretty sure you all know Indus, Ganga, Brahmaputra rivers they all originate from Himalayas. Yes, right. 
deltas of eastern coastal plains formed by Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri rivers. So these deltas are very rich in alluvial soil. Consist of sand, silt and clay. Okay, they consist of sand, silt and clay. On the basis of age, we can divide alluvial soil into two. Okay, Bangar and Khadar. Bangar is the old soil and Khadar is the new soil. Bangar you find a little far away from the riverside whereas Khadar would be very close adjacent to the river as it's a new soil. And alluvial soil is very very fertile. Okay, hence leading to dense, uh, hence it's densely populated and intensely cultivated. They are very much ideal for sugar, paddy, wheat, cereal, pulses cultivation, alluvial soil. Yeah. So next, let's see black soil. Very much obvious. You can see the picture here. It's very much black in color. Also called regular soil. It's uh, derived from Tamil. Reguda, uh, which means cotton, yeah, good for cotton, hence they are called black cotton soil also. Formation, climatic and parent rock plays a very very important role in the formation of this black soil, like in Deccan and basaltic rocks. Location, Maharashtra, Saurashtra, Malwa, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. They are very clay in nature. Content? Very rich in calcium carbonate, magnesium, potash, and lime. The black soil, right? And yes, I'll just move this. Decreed deep cracks in hot weather. But at the same time, during the monsoon and during the rainy season, and if the soil gets wet, it becomes extremely sticky and very, very difficult to work. That's the characteristics of black soil. Yep. Let's see next. Okay, our next slide is here. Yes, red and yellow soil formation, crystalline igneous rock in areas of low rainfall. Location in the eastern and southern part of the Deccan Plateau. Then content igneous rock with iron. I, I'm I'm sure you all know what is igneous rock. Okay. In just for strenders who don't know, igneous rock is uh, first when the magma comes out uh, to the earth's atmosphere, it's called uh, lava. Okay, when this lava cools down, solidifies. Okay, so eventually they become uh, igneous rock later. Okay, Th so that's igneous rock. Uh, uh, develop a reddish color due to diffusion of iron in crystalline and metamorphic rock okay the reddish color but then once they get diluted with water it they turn into yellowish color okay crops tea coffee and rubber very much prominent in red and yellow soil yep we'll see next literate soil derived from latin word which means letter meaning brick you can see the brick develop under high temperature and rainfall that is tropical and subtropical climate location western guards yes and northeast region also content ore of various minerals uh, crop plantation such as cashew very good cashew grows very well in this literate soil let's see next arid soil very much obvious uh, with the name arid and dry soil basically because uh, because of the dry climate high temperature and ro low rainfall hence the soil become very much sandy saline in nature as all the water you can see in this picture all, as all the water in this soil gets evaporated due to high temperature location northwest part in india basically i'm speaking about rajasthan okay is it cultivable yes but only with proper irrigation okay next we'll see forest soil location hills and mountains so when i say hills and mountains it's basically it extends from jammu kashmir till northeast also called mountain soil formation mechanical weathering by snow rain and temperature lumi and silt deposit in the 
valley sides suppose you can see this picture here if it's a valley side it will be very fertile okay and uh, it will be a chorus at the upper slopes at the upper slopes you're gonna it won't be that fertile as at the valley side that's it about forest soil next soil erosion and conservation let's see how is soil how does soil get eroded versus deforestation cutting down the trees overgrazing construction of mining uh, gully erosion that is running water sheet erosion washing away of the topsoil which is called sheet erosion okay uh, next we have soil conservation how do we conserve the soil the following uh, points that would the following points are we discussing with the next slides with the pictures okay. first contour plowing terrace cultivation strip cropping and shelter bells contour plowing and terrace farming so general students get confused between contour plowing and terrace farming can you tell me what's the difference okay fine uh, i'll tell you uh, in terrace farming white steps you can look at this picture in terrace farming white steps are cut around the slopes right this there's a uh, where's the cursor okay there's a slope and then white steps are cut around the slopes of the hill to prevent soil erosion okay but then in contour plowing if you see it follows a natural slope okay there is no any alteration done all right now eventually if this uh, hill the the plowing is done just like that there is no any alteration uh, done so there is the major difference between them now in contour plowing if you start altering here it will turn into a terrace farming okay so not much difference so i hope that's clear uh, strip farming is pretty much clear because you can see the strips here very common in india right and shelter bells planting trees rows of trees along the coast along the along the farms along the fields basically to prevent wind erosion uh, soil erosion by the wind so that's shelter bells Contour plowing, terrace farming, strip farming, shelter belts. I hope that's pretty much clear. Well, I think that's it. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, take care. God bless you. And I'll see you in the next video.